Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void! And today for your Thursday, it's gonna be another mid-rank madness, which just means that it is a gold, platinum, or uh, diamond replay. Wait, hold on a second. Uh, I think it's a platinum or a diamond replay sent to me, uh, sent to not me, sent to Sniper Monkey. Because he is screening them now. His uh, email address is in the description. And he screens them all, watches them all, and then lets me know which ones are the best. So again, do not send your Midoric Madness or Into the Void games. Send them to Sniper Monkey. He is a very dependable screener. I appreciate him a lot. Alright, so bottom left-hand corner. Here on Eternal Empire, we have the Red Terran player. It is Wildcat. And in the top right-hand corner, it is the Blue Zerg player. 0-0. Zero Sporting that Foul Pal clan tag. If you want that, join the Discord server. Come in and say, hey, can someone help me join the clan? And we'll be like, sure. Did you want to join the EU or the NA? And then we'll get you in there. It'll be fantastic. You can also get the nice spinning logo of the Falcon Palette in there. Look how nice it is in 3D and translucent and pretty. Anyway, Zero's going for the 16, 18, 17. As a, this is a Midrake Madness, and players know what build orders are. That's probably going to be a Reaper out of Wildcat. Although, okay, I was going to say, sometimes in these games, players don't bother with Reapers because they're harder to control, and it's hard to get anything out of them. But uh, apparently, Wildcat feels like he can. So, this Reaper's name is Freddie Mercury. Which, okay, lead singer, uh, deceased lead singer of Queen. Fantastic personality. Like, one of the bigger personalities and best singers of the 20th century, I feel like. They did make a movie about, well, is it about him? I guess it's about him in particular. Where they had, oh, I want to say Elliot, because that's who he plays on Mr. Robot. Ugh. <coughs> Excuse me. I am spacing on his name. We're going to get there. He's like Egyptian. Like, his parents are Egyptian. Rami Malek. Thank you. Rami Malek. Anyway, incredible actor. I like him a lot. I feel like he did a pretty good job, but the movie was just a giant mess. Oh, is the Reaper just going to deny the third base? I don't know anybody who really enjoyed it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. There's also an Elton John biopic that wasn't very good this year either. Or bio biopic? Can I say biopic? Because I've always said it biopic, but the other day I realized it probably makes more sense to call it biopic. Okay, well, Freddie Mercury is... Oh, hang on! One HP! I thought for sure Freddie were dead, but he escapes to block off third base. And this is a really good map for blocking the third, because look how long it is for queens to walk. Duh, duh, nah, nah. And then try to take that third base. So zero uh, better have another plan, I think is how this works. I have seen Serral just go right for a lair and go for Mutas off of two base and then take the third at like four minutes. But I don't know what Zero's plan is here. This is a really good map, again, for blocking third bases if you're Terran or Protoss. Keep it up. So Zerglings are out. They're trying to find... Oh, 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 careful, careful. They have speed. KD8 charge. Whee! Does actually knock a couple of the Lings out of there, but there was... You had no plan. You had no escape plan, and now you're toast, unfortunately. There, Freddie Mercury is now out. Thank you for joining the party, though. Hellions on the way from the Terran. Player 0-0, zero -zero, taking a third base at 350. Taking a base at 350. Zero. Okay, there we go. Uh, 356. But yeah, no lair, no extra gas. Just going to be really oversaturated on two bases. I think you kind of have to adjust if this happens to you. You got to maybe take your lair a little bit faster, get some upgrades going, maybe something along those lines. I don't think you can, you can do it the same way that you could if you took your third base at 2.30 or 3.30 or even three minutes. This is interesting. We're going to have to see. That's a fusion core, but guess what? Overlord speed is done, and the Overlord is going to scout it. So oh, hold on. Overlord vision says, I saw the fusion core. All right, nicely done. So a fusion core spotted, and I don't. there's not actually a tech lab. So could this be a Liberator Advanced Ballistic style play is what I would like to know. Let's keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it. There's your tech lab. Okay, so tech lab starting. Overlord says, yeah, this is absolutely a battle cruiser. Maybe not a battle cruiser rush. Maybe not the first thing ever. But it's going to be a battle cruiser because I don't know what else you would do here. 
with all of the gas that you're rolling with. You don't have extra factories. You don't have extra barracks. Yeah, that timing worked out pretty well for Wildcat. He's got a decent build right now. He really does. So there's the fusion core. There's the starport. Does he have the... He's trying to roast up some lings here. Maybe roast up some larva here at the third base, which is not saturated. And the Hellions are problematic, man. Hellions are really, really annoying to deal with. What is that scan? Why would you scan there? Is he trying to... I don't know, man. His production tab is empty right now, which is not ideal. He's not floating a ton of cash, but he's microwing his face off right now. All that for a drop of blood, man. He, no, the transfuse comes in at the last second. And no queens die. And it just instead, all six hellions die. Yeah, just don't straight up fight against queens. If there's a queen and you have like 12 hellions, sure. Burn her down. But uh, I guess he's trying to keep the queen count low for the incoming battle cruiser, But I think it's a little too late for that. There are already four with another one on the way. I, some spores would be really nice here from Zero. He is working on Aspire. He's working on Double Evolution Chamber. Another scan. Tries to see if we're safe to throw a battle cruiser in there. And you know what? You are. Okay, Spore now starting at the main base and at the natural base. So I think he's going to be fine against this BC. Again, the key here is at least five queens with a Spore at each of your bases to anchor the defense. I'm telling you, you might not think you need the Spore, and I don't know that you need it, but it helps a lot to have some static defense to help your drones, because the queens can't be everywhere at once, you know? A uh, battlecruiser attacking here then goes onto the high ground, and the queens have to go all the way around here to catch up. It sucks. It's not a good experience, but I haven't seen a pro player lose to battlecruiser opening from Terran in months. So I, th I think we're okay. I think we're okay as our players here. So Battlecruiser's done. He's actually slow walking it across the map, which is good because then you can tactical jump out if you get in trouble. But it also gives the Zerg player more time to deal with you. So that's not great. Anyway, Spire's done from zero. He's making six Corruptors, which I was going to... It is an overreaction if it's only one BC, but if there start to be two... And especially if there are three, you really want a handful of Corruptors, six or seven or eight. And then just kind of ramp up from there, depending on how many BCs you see. So the battle cruiser arrives. Queen down. It looks like another Queen down. This is not going super well. But the Corruptors pop. And the Queen count, yes, is terrible. But they sacrifice their bodies. Oh, got the battle cruiser in that little tiny window. Where they're vulnerable after they tactical jump, after they start the process. That did not used to be there. It used to be you started tactical jump and you were invulnerable until you jumped. And they nerfed that and that's why that battle cruiser died. In that tiny little window after he clicked tactical jump, where it has to kind of spin up its whatever warp technology, it died to the corruptors. Amazing. Again, corruptors do bonus damage versus giant stuff that flies. And battle cruisers definitely fit that bill. Third base trying to land here for Wildcat while the fourth base is on the way. From zero, and I kind of feel like Wildcat's in a decent place. Is he, is he race car making with battle cruiser support? He's got a bunch of Hellions and Cyclones with a battle cruiser and another one on the way. What a very interesting strategy here today from Wildcat. Hmm. But yeah, I like to do cast Minderic Madness games just because the vast majority of the player base lives in Platinum and Diamond. They just do. There are people who are worse, and statistically, they are much fewer, and there are players who are better, and statistically, a lot fewer there, too. So I just want to see what the mid-level players are doing. They're usually trying to kind of copy what the pros are up to, which is definitely what Zero is working on with his build orders, uh, going for the Corruptors there, going for the Queens. Race, I don't know. I haven't seen a lot of this whole Hellion Cyclone with Battlecruiser thing that Wildcat is rolling with right now. Uh, BC shows up at zero's at attempt at a hatchery, but you know what? There are, like, multiple corruptors here. There you go. Starting the jump a little bit earlier that time, and you can actually get out of there after killing one thing and doing some damage to a morphing in hatchery, which is barely injured. Okay, so I think zero's all right, right? His hatch is done. He's up 70 to 60 total workers, which is fantastic. Pathogen lands on the way from zero at nine minutes and a hives on the way. And hydralisks with range and plus two missile attack and plus one melee attack 
and flyer attack. Okay, Zero's getting all of the upgrades. I can't really fault him for that. That seems real smart. Now, the trick here for Wildcat is he's not doing a fantastic job being race car -y. Right? The whole point of that race car mech is that you're fast. You dart around the map, you snipe down hatches, you run away. And if roaches try to follow you, you lock on with them, use the lock on ability, and kill them as you're running. But uh, they're not really meant for base defense. This is kind of strange. I think it's time to go. He's got some tanks, though. Makes it more traditional mech. This is a very, very weird mech situation. Drilling Claws coming in, too, for Widow Mines. Because why not at this stage? Yeah, look at all these upgrades across the board right now. Evolution Chambers are running. Working on, actually, Neural Parasite for Wildcat. <laughs> I mean, it's for zero, but it's intended for Wildcat's units to be accurate here. So that's going to be a problem for him later against with these battle cruisers. Planetary Fortress for a fourth base done for Wildcat. While Zero's still on, actually, he's got a fifth just now popping. So his expansion timings are good. Wildcat's expansion timings are good. APMs on the players. About 200 for Zero on average. About a 118, 120 on average. For Wildcat, which is fast enough to win in Minrake Madness. I don't think that's going to be a problem for him. But additional factories in production here. We're working on that stuff. Another base coming in for Wildcat down here to the south. He is really expanding a lot. And Zero might be in trouble. This Hydra skin, they've got the little flaps on the back of their heads that open when they shoot. It reminds me very much of Jurassic Park. I can't remember... Uh, Neural Parasite's not done, by the way. Ah, there's your fungal. Battlecruiser down. And that one jumps out after he... Oh, never mind. Jumps over here after he realizes his buddy died. And the Blue Flame Hellbats... And the battle cruiser are going to try to take down this hatch. I don't think they're going to get it just because the entire army for zero eventually showed up. And battle cruiser out. So largely Roach, largely Hydra. Uh, is it a, like a Diptheridon or something like that? I remember it starts with a D. Not a Diplodocus because those are huge. Those are like Brachiosaurs, which I don't think actually exist. I don't know, man. Dinosaur paleontology and science has really changed on me since I was a kid. All the facts I memorized when I was like seven don't seem to apply anymore. I'm an old person. What can I say? Fungal as that infester gets yeeted down the ramp. Huge engagement here from Zero. Besides, he doesn't like the number of tanks on the ground and decides to pull back. Yeah, your Roach Hydra army is not going to like all of these tanks at all. Plus two vehicle attack is on the way, by the way. So that's pretty good. But I mean, Wildcat, his economy is at 79 workers. He's on five bases. I mean, this is really good macro out of Wildcat. And that's the trick. Like, a lot of the time, macro is, is what, isn't is what is keeping these players out of Masters and out of GM. It's usually micro. It's usually knowing when to fall back. Like, for example, maybe not attacking into a spine crawler with your Hellions. But that was decent. That was a decent fallback here. Little micro tricks. And you remember when he was up here microing his Hellions and not making anything back home for Wildcat. That stuff the pros can't do either. Or you're going to lose games. So that's the stuff that's the problem. In general. Greater Spire on the way from Zero. At 14 minutes. Base in the top left here for Zero is almost done. Blue Flame Hellions find it. They transform into Hell Bats. They might have a chance of killing this hatch. But I don't know. Look at him cutting off this avenue. You know what, he's just, uh, I don't, uh, you want to send everybody? There we go. He's splitting off some units to defend here. He's got some burrowed infestors in the mix. I'm um, Transform, though. Yeah, early it seems like transforming was the thing to do there. Neural Parasite on some Thors going to town on their smaller mech buddies. Wow, taking down a Raven. That was some sick Neural Parasite play. Out of zero. You really can't just let your giant mech units wander around on their own out here. 
you gotta have some tanks. You gotta have some detection. He did have the Raven, you'll notice, but that's gone now, unfortunately. He's replacing it. He's working on the servo upgrade to allow Hellbats to transform into Hellions faster and vice versa. Does that allow Thors to transform more quickly? I'm pretty sure it does. Look at Wildcat expanding again. And Zero expanding again. So these players are not doing a great job stopping each other from expanding. And perhaps they're both just fine with allowing the other player to do whatever they want because that means they're doing whatever they want. I would say Wildcat has put the pressure on Zero much more than the other way around. Which is how ZVT generally is. So maybe, you know, Zero's used to it. I guess is what I'm trying to say here. But yeah, at this stage, plus three vehicle attack is on the way from Wildcat, which is massive. Zero's making an Ultralisk Cavern because he's sitting here on 8,000 minerals and 2,500 gas and being like, yes. <laughs> I think I got this. Uh, what do we have against Broodlords here? A couple Thors, which is actually, this Broodlord might just be dead. He did escape in time, but down to 50 HP. Again, this single target Thor business does so much damage per hit against the uh, Broodlords. Top left base. I mean, we're getting there. But it wasn't exactly a marine marauder attack against a hatchery when they have plus three attack and stim and everything. That's for sure. Zero's being a little bit passive on defense here. I don't know if he's really worried about this army sitting at his front, but... I'm going to argue that Neural Parasiting a couple Cyclones like that was not entirely necessary. Uh, SCV's up here fighting a hatchery because we need to free up supply for more Thors, apparently, for Wildcat. And then he just decides to march on in while the army's a bit of an away situation here. That hatch is almost dead. Tank setting up, but here come the Broodlords. The Thors, though, I don't know if there are enough Thors is the problem. Right? Thors are the answer here, but... Not if there's a Thor versus eight Broodlords at all. Yeah, this ground army, just too much Zerg. The Broodlords are helping, but I, I don't know how necessary they are. I guess the tank count is getting pretty heavy as we pull back. Oh, okay. Nice neural parasiting on these tanks. Getting shots off on that Thor, which is hilarious. Okay, so I mean, not an incredibly elegant victory there from 0-0, zero zero, but it worked. It was enough. These SCVs might be allowed to kill this hatchery, which I think would be probably the highlight of the match. They're like, we were sent on a suicide mission. 99% of all SCVs sent out to kill a hatchery never achieved their objective and are dead. And now they're all dead. I, I jinxed them by bringing attention to them. I don't know that Zero would have noticed. Dude, the Neural Parasite today, though? It's accomplishing some stuff. It really is. Wildcat sitting on 6,000, 2,000 of a bank. He's working on plus three armor for his mech and his air units. They share that upgrade. Zero's working on plus three flyer attack. As well as plus three melee and plus three missile. His upgrades have been pretty good. A little bit late on the 3-3, three, three, but you know what? He was busy neural parasiting all the things. Now the trick here is, if you're going to just take half of the map like this, you need to be as cost efficient as the Terran player is. And you know what he's doing that. It is 11,000 resources lost for Zero and 17,000 lost for Wildcat. So, yeah, I'd say his plan is working. Let the Terran player take half the map, and then just be more cost-efficient in the battles, and you'll be fine. Usually, that's mech's reign. Uh, this planetary on its own is not going to hold against all of this. Goodbye, planetary. I, you can't out-repair this. I'm sorry. It's not happening. That's like an entire Zerg army. Repair is good. Repair cannot handle. An entire Zerg army showed up. And Zero pulling back, being very patient, expanding again. 
So yeah, weird composition out of Wildcat, a very weird composition out of Zero in response. Corruptor, Broodlord, Roach, Hydralisk. Not worrying about Banes just because his opponent isn't really doing stuff that necess necessitates Banes all that much. Another planetary down and probably another planetary down. Again, I'm not sure if Wildcat is aware that turning his Hellions into Hellbats means their damage against buildings goes up by about 10. A factor of 10. But Wildcat's economy is sort of getting ruined right now. This base is dead. That base is dead. This base is dead. <coughs> he did a great job, but his base count is low. Now, this is what you do. Your opponent has Broodlords. You know what they are? Slow. You know what that means they're bad at? Defense. Let's get out of here. Get this stuff. This Vespin Geyser is uh, out of gas anyway. It is expired. But hey, losing a hatchery is bad. Losing all this larva also bad. And they said they say never base race a Terran. So actually coming back home here. Does he just leave the Broodlords? He might just... No, he's bringing them all home too. Yeah, this is really scary stuff. This is... What the microbial shroud? Zero. Is Zero Dash Zero going to be the first person on my channel to use Microbial Shroud? Somehow I doubt it. It only affects air to ground attacks, and there's nothing here that can do that. So, that would be dumb. But fully upgraded Thors and fully upgraded tanks are a little bit terrifying, unless you have spellcasters, and Zero has spellcasters. He's got the Infestors. Vipers are a fine play here, too. Blinding Cloud and Abduct are both very good against these big ticket items, the tanks and the Thors. See what I'm talking about versus buildings? Oh, yeah. Hellbats, man. 18 kills and 10 kills. So this is a couple hatches down. A couple command centers and planetaries down. Wildcat not quite sure where he wants to go at this point. And he just kind of let the Infestors walk up to him and neural all of his tanks. He's got five. Oh, there it is. Neural, 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 neural. Oh my gosh. The neural from behind. Okay, that was disgusting. What a play. Uh, goodbye, everything in the army for Wildcat. He's down to 75 army supply. Zero's at 154, but he also has 28 drones, which is bad. He does save this base up top left. The bottom right is a base here too. Zero has taken after destroying a Terran base. But yeah, Wildcat. You just need more detection. You can't get snuck up on by infestors when you have tanks. What you really need to be doing as a Liberator getting cleared out of the sky here by plus three attack Corruptors. Yeah, you just gotta have a raven, maybe a couple ravens, just be scanning a whole bunch. You just can't let infestors wander to within spitting distance of your tanks and neural all of them and crush an engagement that he had no business crushing. Like, I'm, I'm totally victim blaming here. I'm telling Wildcat he did some things wrong that led to his army all dying. But that's Starcraft, right? Your army died in that way, you probably did something wrong. Like, the army supply was not big enough for Zero for that to be as one-sided as it was, but the spells were a big deal. Zero actually tossing up a Nidus at this kind of a ninja base at this point, just to be able to defend it. Sort of, if he needs to. I don't know that he has the units available to spare to go into the Nidus. But, you know, Wildcat reestablishing some bases here. Reinforcing some bases. Has 49 SCVs. There are 37 drones right now from Zero. The Vikings are going to handle the Broodlords, which I, they may have just completely lost. Lost their usefulness. Am I convinced about this attack? Not really. 
Could Neural Parasite totally turn the tide of it as it's going poorly for the Zerg right now? Sure could. And there it is. Simulation successful. And suddenly your Thor count is down to zero. His Thor count is up to two. And that was a dead Zerg army until the Infestors showed up. Just insane. Just insane value out of these investors today. We thought Thor has 17 kills and he's not dead yet. So this base survives, and this base survives. It's 36 to 33 workers. 27 drones have died, and 61 SCVs have been killed, and that's 18 Thors down today. 18 Thors down is insanity. Seven Ultras in production from zero. He's recognizing the tank count ain't what it used to be, nor is that Thor count. Uh, in fact, the army is uh, nine tanks, three Thors. Kind of split up, though. Not really in all one place, unfortunately. This base died in the bottom right at some point, and in return, the Terran attempt at expanding down here will also fail. So both players really try to take this cursed location and not succeeding very well. Now this might be the beginning of the end. Just gonna toss that out there. Uh, these Ultralisks have plus three attack and plus three armor, and I don't think they have chitinous plating, which seems like an issue. Thor, attack though, Thor. Ah, uh, Thor could have killed probably both those rude lords, but just didn't. Top left base gonna die to blue flame hellbats, and these drones are likely in a lot of trouble too. But uh, a bunch of factories are out. There's some widow mines in here, but it doesn't really matter at this stage. Actually, leaving the hatch alone to kill the drones. This is a little bit tight from zero. I know he has the 164 to 52 army supply advantage. But it should not be that tight. But they say never base race a Terran. Seven kill Hellion there. Not bad. He's dead now. Yeah, this just feels like Zero's got it in the back here. He just has the better army. The economy is about the same, which is not what you want to say if you're a Terran player. I mean, his income for minerals is actually better. This is a decent position defensively, but again, the Neural Parasite just changes the equation just enough. Just enough to where it's just a Thor and a tank remaining. Okay, just kidding. A Thor remaining, and it's blue, and Wildcat tosses out the, such a broken spell. GG! Zero calls out the GG and says, really? Yes, says Wildcat. But why, says Zero, as this game is over, but we're going to have a deep philosophical discussion about Neural Parasite here on the channel today. Pro opinions, says Wildcat, not mine. I'm just restating. Well, <laughs> you're not just gonna hash out an opinion that the pros have you disagree with at the end of a match in StarCraft, are you? No, it was worse when infested Terrans were with them. Says Zero. That's true. Infested Terrans are gone, but we have found other reasons to consider Zerg OP, including Abduct, including Neural Parasite. The new ability sucks. True fact. Neural is OP, not Infestors. Well, 
What is the OP here? The unit or the spell? <laughs> yeah, microbial shroud. I think Zero got it just for the memes. Just to make me think he'd actually use it, but there's no reason to. There wasn't. I mean, again, it only affects incoming attacks from the air to the ground in a fairly small area and only reduces the attack by 50%. And Neural's the only good counter to death balls. It's a fair point. That's the trick. A lot of the stuff that looks super overpowered, I have no counter to yours, especially with a Broodlord nerf. Right? If there wasn't Neural Parasite in this game, Wildcat just wins. He wins easy. So then there's an answer for Zerg, but that makes the Zerg look OP, and I don't know what you do, man. I don't know what you do. I mean, Wildcat is upset. His APM has dropped to zero. Uh, both players are just sitting here. You had one that I saw. Well, how many Ravens died in this game? Zero? Nine Ravens died! He made nine. <laughs> yeah, Wildcat is not wrong. He he had some Ravens. It didn't seem to matter all that much. Most Zerg clump their infestors. If you can see them, you can MP them. EMP them, that's true. This is a very this is a very um maybe not incredibly respectful respectful conversation, but uh as as respectful as I think you can get in a discussion about balance at the end of a ladder match. Probably. It's been done to me before. Infestors are very fragile, too. It's true, they are. And Wildcat taps out. I don't know if we're going to consider that a rage quit, necessarily, but um, he was not pleased, which is understandable. I get where he's coming from there. So, good match, though. I mean, how do we get to see that much Neural Parasite in a match, huh? 13 Infestors died in that game. There was one at the end of the day. 35 drones died. 91 SCVs. A lot of that was at the end, obviously. Uh, 21 Thor is down as a ton of Thor. 24 tanks down as a ton of tanks. 65 Hydras, 5 Ultras, 21 Corruptors, uh, 4 Broodlords went down, 7 Hatcheries were killed. I mean, Wildcat did a decent job killing bases today, but at the end of the day, just didn't have an answer to the Neural Parasite. And again, it just comes down to map awareness. You gotta have the detection. You have to see the little infestors creeping up on you. If you don't see them creeping up on you, then yeah, they'll ruin your day. For sure. All right. Well, you know what? That's going to be it for me today. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.
is unending. I feel your presence. Kinala to 